today on Gunslinger Firearms and Gear, uh, we're going to do a review on a Beretta Nano. It's in 9mm. Uh, got a variation of ammunition here for it. It's got a 7, I'm sorry, a 6 and an 8 round magazine. Uh, the lock and all that good stuff that comes with it. Uh, it's kind of in comparison to the Smith & Wesson Shield, the Car P uh, PM9, uh, the uh, Glock 43, several guns in that uh, uh, arena. Uh, it's got an abbreviated grip like all of these guns do, which can be completed with the extended magazine. Yeah, you know, it's good for you know control or range and so on, but it's going to add to the overall length of the gun. So the true compactability is with the six round magazine. We're going to load it up and we're going to do some shooting. Okay, we're going to put the six round magazine in it first and see where our impact is. Uh, first thing I noticed, uh, I was pulling to the left and shooting low. Uh, I made those adjustments and uh, started hitting the target. Uh, recoil's not too terribly bad. Uh, the trigger's got just a long uh, pull to it. Uh, something I just have to get used to. But uh, overall, not, not a bad feeling gun. Uh, now it's going to uh, try the uh, extended 8 round magazine and get the impressions from it. hit center uh, quite a bit, uh, pulled off a few times, just trying to get used to that trigger pull. Uh, it's just a sweeping motion that comes back, uh, and instead of coming straight back like a lot of the triggers do, it forced my finger to kind of come up. Uh, something to get used to, but you know, it's something to get used to after my first shot. Uh, and I'm, I think maybe coming out of a holster to defend myself, you know, I'm gonna hit close, but I may not hit where I want to. Uh, we'll let Terry take a look at it, and we'll go from there. Okay, I'm going to start out with the short magazine. I have large hands and I don't typically like a short gripped subcompact gun, but uh, we're going to give it a shot and see how it goes. Okay, I missed a couple times on there. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and switch it out to the extended magazine and see what I can do with that. It does have a very long trigger pull and a, uh, a long reset as well. That felt a whole lot better with the magazine extension. I can get my pinky on there. And still, you know, I'm, I'm a little bit off, a little bit on that ridge right there. But otherwise, uh, aside from the trigger pull that I really don't care for, the gun shoots really well. The recoil is not bad. It's not nearly as snappy as what I thought it would be. Okay, now we're gonna test it with a different variety of ammunition. Uh, I've got some 124 grain Remington uh, Ultimate Defense. Uh, and then I have uh, 135 grain Federal Hydroshock. Uh, both of them are like a low recoil uh, ammunition for uh, short barreled 
uh, semi-automatics. Uh, we're going to test those out and see how the recoil is and if uh, the uh, gun stays true to impact from full metal jacket uh, to a hollow point. Okay, I'm going to try the uh, uh, Remington uh, Ultimate Defense first and uh, see how it, how it shoots. A uh, sizable difference in the uh, recoil. Uh, I was hitting pretty good with it, uh, uh, but uh, I can definitely tell the difference in the back of my hand uh, from com compared to the Full Metal Jacket uh, PMC that we were firing before this. Uh, I'm going to put the uh, Federal Hydroshock in here. Uh, it's a heavier bullet yet, uh, with 135 compared to 124 grains, and. Uh, one would think the recoil is going to be even more harsh, uh, but I guess the proof will be in the pudding. It was actually uh, a little easier to shoot than what the uh, uh, Remington was. Um, it hit pretty good, of course, still getting used to this trigger. Uh, it still hit minute a bad guy. Uh, so as far as a defensive uh, handgun, it wouldn't be a bad choice. Uh, still not you know, something that a, a person of small stature or something like that, they could still handle that gun. Uh, just the issue with any semi-automatic, you know, can someone uh, pull the slide back, uh, you know, just to get around in the gun, you know, that would be the, the biggest thing. And it's not that hard to pull this back, and it does have pretty good serrations on the uh, back of the slide. Uh, so, you know, overall impressions right now, uh, I'd say if I got to shoot it a little bit more, uh, I could get used to this trigger. Uh, but, uh, you know, I think it'd take a little bit of time, but I'll, I, I could master it in a, in a rather short uh, shooting session. And now we're going to use the head of the cartridge to take the gun apart right here. As you can see, this is the disassembly pin or lever. Uh, what I have to do first, I'm going to let the slide down. We're going to make clear, make sure, let it forward, pull the trigger, and turn this lever here, and the slide comes right off. Now we have got our major components, the frame and the slide, and... Uh, we have our guide rod and spring assembly, which is captive, and the barrel itself. Not too hard. Uh, just like most modern guns nowadays, you've got to pull the trigger to uh, take them apart you know, for disassembly. So the, the most important thing first is to make sure your gun is not loaded. Uh, we're going to reassemble. As soon as you pull back, the lever itself corrects itself, and now you're back together. That concludes the test of the Beretta Nano. Uh, I think that the uh, trigger pull is something to get used to. The gun worked 100%. Uh, recoil was a little harsh with one of our uh, defense loads, uh, but it's not something that's not controllable. Uh, if uh, you're in the market for a, a small subcompact, this might be something to check out. Thanks for watching the Gunslinger Firearms and Gear channel. Uh, if you would like and subscribe, we'd appreciate that. Look for us on Facebook and look for more reviews. Thanks, guys.